Okay, something you may want to look at here. I have in the top of my motor mounts, I've put a hole in the center of each of these. I've just drilled them out. Uh, actually, I used my Dremel. That's the reason they're kind of burnt looking. <laughs> you may want to do that because if you use the motors that I'm using for this QSC tricopter, you're going to need a little bit of pass-through on the back side uh, of your mounting plate. And that pass-through is simply so that you can uh, the, the rear shaft of the motor uh, can, can be be allowed to spin freely. So that's all that is, is just a little relief hole for when we're ready to mount our motors on. Okay, well at this point we've got most everything glued up. We'll start with the rear arm and of course we know that this long uh, projection here is like where we would put a helicopter mount or camera or battery, whatever. That's the front. So we can actually come in through the rear and we can line up our holes by looking through there, and I'll see them, I'll find them in just a minute. Come on in, there we go. And we can take a bolt and a washer and push it through there. I guess I drilled my holes a little snug. Let's see if I can get this one going. There's one. Maybe that'll help me get this one in. There we go. Those, that one started. And we're ready for our blind nuts on the back side of that. And we can do the same thing with our fronts. Just slide them up and into position. I'm going to have to work on that a little bit, but you get the idea. And slide this one into position. There we go. And voila, it's starting to take shape. We can see we have a tricopter. The lengths of the arms that I've used here are just ideal for the Tower Pro 241009 motors. Now, as far as our little landing gear, I'll leave this up to you. I would recommend somewhere between the end of the arm and the center radius is where you're going to want to put these landing gear legs. You can, you can glue them in or, or you can screw them down, just whatever you like. Kind of doesn't matter. And I'll probably glue mine on. But, as you can see, there is our finished tricopter. And if we take these bolts out, that's the reason we want a blind nut on there. Well then, this arm is free to pivot back as so. Same thing for this other front arm. Just slide your bolts back in there. And I've got to play with those holes a little bit. <laughs> um, open the back one up. Anyway, and by, by doing that, now you've got a real small form factor for hauling around and such. All right, next we'll talk about the uh, servo mount for this rear pivot. All right, gang, the last thing that we need to cover on our tricopter, our QSC tricopter airframe, we need to cover the yaw control. How are we going to mount a servo to pivot this rear block so that we have yaw authority on this airframe? Well, there are a couple of different options. There are no rules other than you need to have a nice, solid, slop-free, I guess, control. And other than that, you can do it pretty much any way you want. One way that I've seen done that you might consider is to use a, you know, a piece of, of ply. And I, this is just a scrap that I dug up. This is not how I would do it. 
I would, you know, open it up a little bit and have a bigger piece, but you might put on, you know, a control horn, so to speak. Make it, glue it on, epoxy, maybe put an extra screw in uh, to, to make sure it doesn't come apart. Drill a hole there for your Z-Bend to go in. You could do something like that, and that would give you, you know, give you yaw control. Um, what I have been using on mine, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull up the first prototype. Mind you, it's a little ugly. <laughs> it was a prototype. I'll try to hold this up here so you can see it. But this is what I came up with. And it's just a piece of, um, piece of short 256 threaded music wire into a 256 sized ball joint kit. And I got it, it's a, this is a Great Plains ball joint kit that I got at my hobby shop for a couple of bucks. And that provides a nice full range of motion and, you know, relatively slot free. That is the way that I recommend doing it because all you have to do is take a very small drill bit, drill it into your block down into the corner where you've got room and you know it's going to provide you with enough, I guess, room for that ball link and for servo play, uh, servo travel. And then thread that ball link in and then back it back out, put a little thin CA in the hole, thread it back in until it stops, till it snugs up and now that ball link would be set. Snap on the ball and run it up to your servo. Use an easy connector here so that you have adjustability. Just be sure you don't forget to tighten it. Anyway, that is a really, really good yaw mechanism. Now, a failure of this design that you'll see, if you look, you may be able to see that servo likes to wiggle a little bit. That's not good. That is not a slot-free setup. So, what I'm going to recommend now, since we're going to wood arms on this one, you can see here that I've put a little plate on there. Just a piece of eighth inch light ply that I shaved down, glued in place, and that's going to give me a great way to mount my servo. The servos that I'm using are basically just a mini sized servo. Perfect servo for this application is the HiTech HS81. The servo's got plenty of torque to move that spinning disc, that propeller, you know, and tilt it back and forth. I've never stalled it. It's a great, inexpensive solution. It's like 15 bucks. Also, there's the little uh, Tower Pro MG16R. Uh, that's another option. That's what I've got here. And I've made this plate here so that I can use a double-sided sticky tape to mount the thing down. But I'm going to use a trick that I used to use back in my Nitro days for doing throttle servos. Basically, we're going to take electrical tape or packing tape or some sort of tape and wrap this servo around the case. And we're going to do that. You'll see why later. But we're going to wrap it around the case to seal that case off. And then we're going to come in with our just inexpensive foam cushiony double-sided sticky tape. We'll put it down on our plate where we're going to mount the servo. And then we'll stick the servo in place as such. And then we're going to come back with thin CA, real thin watery CA, and we're going to wick it in all the way around all four corners that are exposed of the sides of that sticky tape. When we do that, it'll take some of the cushion out, but it'll also glue it down tight where that tape is not going to pull away from the wood. It's not going to pull away from the servo. It's going to be on there. Now, when you get ready to take that servo off, since you've glued it in place, well, you can just basically use your X-Acto blade, slip it under your electrical tape or packaging tape that you've used to wrap it, and slide it up, peel it away, and you've got a fresh servo with no, no tape goo on it, no glue, none of that. Uh, that works real well. So at this point, I'm going to leave mounting the servo up to you. Oh, one other thing, you may elect to build yourself a mounting plate like we have here, and I just used scrap 1 8 inch light ply. We've already bought it and we've got plenty left over after this design. And you can build something like that and then use your hardware to mount the servo in, you know, with screws, and then stick it on to the tail boom like that. You may even want to use a combination of both, where we do this, this plate and then a little sticky tape there to, you know, hold it in nice and positive. I'm going to leave that up to you there. If you look at RC groups, there are tons of different ways of, 
of mounting the servos, of creating your yaw mechanism linkage. It's, you know, it's just whatever your personal preference is. At some point, as scratch builders, we have to make up our own minds as to how we want to pull something off. Remember, if you find out later down the line that it's not optimal, well, since you've built this design yourself, make changes. Adjust it any way you want. That is the glory of scratch building. You don't have to necessarily follow anybody else's lead, anybody else's instruction. It's whatever you want to do. So join us next week as we discuss the power system that we're going to put on here. What motors, what speed controllers, and how are we going to wire that junk all up?